Hello and welcome back to the Alpha Anywhere demo and Q&A webcast. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software. I'm pleased to be joined today by Sarah Mitchell in charge of our documentation department. Today, Sarah is going to be giving a presentation on something similar to last week, which was Alpha Launch, but this week we're gonna be talking about the Alpha Shell application, an application which is similar but it's got some different use cases and uh, sets up a little bit differently. But I think you're going to find it uh, to be very interesting. And I think you're going to find uh, the Alpha Launch to be extremely helpful if you build mobile applications in Alpha. So let's get started. Hello, Sarah. Are you there? I am. Can you hear me? I can. You're coming in loud and clear. Let me go ahead and make you the presenter. And I'll let you know when I can see your screen. And there it is. All right. Yeah, we're back. Uh, I'm we back. Are back. You're back. <laughs> I'm back. Welcome back, everybody. Um, this demonstration this week is what we're going to talk about. We're talking about Alpha Shell. Um, some of you might be familiar with Alpha Shell. It's a template that we have in Alpha Anywhere. You can find it in the UX templates. Um, it's Previously in the past, it's it's been there for people who want to publish that uh, up to the App Store or something like that, and just load components and try them out. Uh, but we've we've taken it uh, another step recently, and this is still a little bit of a work in progress. But um, we've decided to release a version in the Android and iOS App Stores that you can download and install, so you don't have to do that step of getting that up there. Um, which means that there's actually a new version of Alpha Shell uh, in the UX templates called Alpha Shell 3. Um, definitely recommend using that one if you want to create an Alpha Shell app. Um, side note, everything that I'm about to cover, you can download now. Uh, it's up here in this GitHub repository. Let me copy that. Hold on. Let me copy that URL for you guys. Put it in the chat. There we go. So um, Alpha Shell, previous mentioned, it's a, it's an app. It's in the iOS App Store now. It's going to be in the Android App Store soon. Uh, we're just ironing out a few more issues, and it should be up there very soon. Uh, but basically what it is, it's a wrapper app for downloading and running a UX component, just a component, not, not a whole app. Um, what it does is it downloads the component from some uh, server where you've published it, it runs it natively on the mobile device. It has access to all the plugins that we've included in the Alpha Shell app, uh, which I believe are the same plugins that are available in Alpha Launch. Um, there is a, a way to see what the plugins are in Alpha Shell, and I'll show you how to access that later in our live demo. Um, with this app, uh, the intention of this app is to give you somewhere to test your components on a mobile device. This isn't your like full app, it's just a, a part Part of your app, a piece of your app. Uh, but what it does is it downloads your component, runs it. Um, you can download components published by other developers on a server if they give you access to it. Uh, it's also sort of a way to demo something in its early development stages. As with all things that we provide, uh, there are some limitations. Um, you must publish the UX to a, a server, um, such as Alpha Cloud. If you have the full version of Alpha Anywhere, if you're not running Community Edition, you could, in theory, use the development server. Getting that set up is a little complex and not super reliable since most people probably don't have a static IP address, but it's doable. Uh, you can't test web themes. If you've got a copy of the Alpha theme or you're using Android Dark, those are not going to download. You have to use the Alpha theme within the app. Um, you can't include your own custom plugins. And anything that you want to try out uh, can't be downloaded while you're offline. Uh, the way Alpha, Alpha Shell works is when you request a UX component to view, it goes to the server and downloads it, downloads it at that time. Uh, compare this to Alpha Launch, which actually downloads and installs your application files locally, give, making them accessible whether or not you have an internet connection. Alpha Shell doesn't work that way. So today, um, we're going to go through the checklist of the things you need to do in order to take your component and try it in Alpha Shell. 
So these first two steps, you got to build a UX and you got to publish it to an application server. We're not going to go into the details of that. But we covered that a little bit last week when we talked about alpha launch. Um, and if, if anybody out there isn't familiar with how to publish to uh, application server, by all means, please put your questions in the questions pane of the GoToWebinar control panel or send us an email at guides at alphasoftware.com. This applies to all other questions you may have today or later. Um, but I'm more than happy to get you resources on how to publish uh, as well as how to build a UX. Um, the core things we're going to look at today are how do you generate a QR code for installing a server and a component on Alpha Shell, and we're going to also look at a demo of that and try it out. So skipping over those first two steps, we're going to talk about generating QR code. So the QR code generation, everything that you want to need to do to get something into Alpha Shell is inside the menu in the UX builder, down at the bottom, you're gonna find this thing called alpha shell QR codes. If you don't see that in the current version of alpha anywhere you are running, you may need to install the nightly build. I'm not 100% sure if that's currently available in this current pre -release, uh, current release, but this is definitely available in the nightly builds. Uh, anyway, you're gonna, the component that you want to publish to alpha shell, you're gonna open up that menu and you're gonna click alpha shell QR codes. You're gonna give it a name. This is gonna have some sort of default name in here. I believe you can change it if you want to. You're gonna give it a URL where you published it because we've already published it to a server at this point. And then a little description of that server. So the recommended way to set up this QR code is to select this last option here that includes both the component and the server. Uh, you could, if you already have your server installed in Alpha Shell, you could skip that part and just generate the QR code for installing the component itself. Uh, but this this option covers all your bases. It can be used to both add the component as well as install the uh, or add the server to Alpha Shell if you if you haven't done that yet. So once you put this information here, you're going to click this generate the QR code button, and that's going to give you this QR code which you can scan to add the component and the server to Alpha Shell. We're gonna take a look at how you do that next. Um, so Alpha Shell, when you first launch it, you're gonna see this screen on the right-hand side here. And in the bottom corner, there's gonna be this little three lines button. And this is where all the magic happens. There's usually a button down there in that corner uh, that you're gonna to need to tap on various screens to access the options that you need. So initially, you're not gonna have anything in here because you haven't added anything. So what you'll do is you'll tap that menu icon, which will pop up this little menu here. And if you've never added a server before, um, you're gonna tap settings, which is gonna open up this server page. And you're gonna see this option here that says default. You could choose to change that if you want to, or you could tap this menu down here, it looks identical, which opens up this screen here. And at the top, you'll see add server address, which is what you're want to, going to want to select. And when you select add server address, it's going to give you this little drop down pop up in here. And initially, this will be blank because you haven't scanned anything. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to tap this scan button and scan that QR code that you generated in Alpha Anywhere. And that should add these two items. It should add the URL and the, the description of, of your server. So once you've scanned that, you'll click OK. And you should see your server down here in this list. You want to make sure there's a little check mark next to it. And you also want to click this button up here. It says test Ajax callbacks. And all that's going to do is that Alpha Shell is going to just send a callback to your server to make sure it's there. Um, and if you've configured everything correct, then you're going to get this little green message. Uh, if it can't find your server, if it's offline, if you're offline, then you're going to have an error. So once you've verified that, um, you want to go back to uh, the main app screen, which is done through this back button. And then the next thing you're going to need to do is add your component. So back down here, remember that triple line button we saw on the very first screenshot? You're going to tap it again. And instead of selecting settings, this time you're going to select Add Component. You're going to tap that Scan button and scan the same QR code that you generated, um, because we selected the option to both generate one for the component and the server. 
And after you've scanned that, you should see that name that you gave your component appear here. And you'll click OK. And that adds your component to the list. So at this point, you are ready to try out your app. And the way you do that is just tap that entry in the list, and it should launch it for you. And here's a screenshot of launching that. We are going to go look at this app here shortly um, as soon as I find my live demo screen. But just to talk about a few more things here before we do that, if you look down here in the corner, there's these three little bright blue dots. Um, that's, uh, that's where you go to get out of your app while you're trying it out. So once you're done testing your app, you can tap that, that little icon down there and it's gonna open up this little menu. And it's gonna have four options in it. It's gonna have a back option, which will take you back to that component listing screen. It has a refresh option that you can tap to reload your component from the server. So if you've opened up your component and it looks like it's got some blatant errors, you can go and republish it real quick and use this menu to reload it. You don't have to go back to the main screen and add it again. You can just reload it by republishing it to your server. The hide option hides this menu. And then there's this other little triple dot thing which opens up a screen that lets you configure where these three little blue dots are located. Uh, it can be on the left, right, center. It can be up in the middle or up in the top. So that's that's it. It's a it's a pretty simple um, app, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys how we do that scan uh, live. So I'm going to come in here, and I already have I have I have that component that was in those screenshots, and we'll just take a look at it real quick here. We'll turn off mobile. So what this what this UX is is it's a list that has some static data in it. And it has this little menu button up here. When I click on it, it shows me three different buttons. When I tap on these buttons, it changes the layout that's sh showing this data in this list. And here's the Kanban one, which is actually interactive. Um, so that's all this component is. So just to um, try it out, I have already published this up to um, Alpha Cloud. And the reason I did this in advance is because this process can be a little slow and I just wanted to make sure this was up and working. Uh, but here's that exact same app doing the same things. So let's go here. So if I want to try this in Shell, I'm going to go up here to Menu. I'm going to select Alpha Shell QR Codes, which is going to give me this window here. And this is that um, component name. It's been created for me automatically. So I'm, I'm just going to leave the default for now. I could change it to something else if I wanted to. But next, what I'm going to do is going to open up this URL. And the way I got this URL is that when I published this up to uh, my server, I also included um, an A5W page, which has that component embedded on it, which is the easiest way to figure out what your server URL is, is to publish a page and then open it. So for folks who are publishing using FTP or HTTP or to IIS or over a LAN, um, that's how you can figure out what your server URL is, is to include that page and then open it. If you can't open it, then either your assumptions about where your server is located is wrong or there's something else going on. But once you have this URL, you can just copy this base path, and I want to show you guys here my app. There's that A5W. What, what you really need here is just everything before your A5W page. So copy that out. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to add a description as well. And I have this last option selected so that we can set all of these things in one go. And then if I tap that button, there's my, my QR code. So next, we're going to pop over onto my phone. And I'm going to temporarily move that off screen so we can just look at what this looks like when we're, when we're in Alpha Shell. So this is Alpha Shell. This is the, this is the main app. And if I get on here to the corner and I tap that menu, go to settings, 
tap that menu in the bottom again and tap add server address, I get this pop-up. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scan that URL, which I've moved onto my other monitor right now. So I'll tap scan. There we go. And there's my that information I entered. It's my server URL and my, my description. I'm gonna click OK. See that it's selected. I'm gonna tap that test Ajax callback just to make sure it worked. And I got the green server address is valid, so that's a good sign. So I've set up everything I need to here. I'm gonna tap back. And next I'm gonna add my UX component. I'm gonna open up that little hamburger menu again, go all the way top and click add component. I'm gonna scan that same QR code again that I generated. There's my list layout demo, click okay. And that's my component. Uh, and at this point when I tap on that, it's gonna download my components. And in here you can see there's those same, same options, which also let me edit it if I want to. And then finally, if I wanna exit, I'm gonna go down to this bottom corner where those three little dots are and tap back. And now I'm back at the main screen. So that's Alpha Shell in a nutshell. Do you have any questions? Um, sure, a couple of questions. So let's start with, uh, you had mentioned earlier that there's a way to see the plugins that are available uh, in alpha shell. And so there is, so there is. That is that. an excellent question. I already forgot I was going to do that and show that to you guys. All right. So and then um, I have a related question to that one. But go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, so here on the main screen, whether or not you have a component loaded doesn't matter. If you open up that menu and you go to settings and then open the menu up again and tap phone gap plugins, this is the list of all the plugins that are available to you to use in your app. If you don't see a plugin listed here that you're using, you can't use it. Mm -hmm. Not not here anyway. Yeah. Now, related question is for alpha launch, what is there a way to find out what those are? I know that's not the same as shell, but um, right. does alpha launch have that capability as well, or is there documentation or is it no like alpha launch person? has that capability as well? And I'm just going to open it up off screen so you guys. Oh, can see fantastic. My see my desktop. So um, this is Alpha Shell. Uh -huh. um, alpha Launch. Alpha Launch. I know. Hard, hard, hard oh my gosh. Me. I hear that transfer <laughs> demo yesterday. I'm calling everything launch in my head. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Anyway, if you're in Alpha Launch, uh, uh -huh. if you go to settings yep. and expand, there's this little thing. You got to turn it on. Yep. But if you scroll down, it says list plugins, like second from the bottom there. I see it. That's that's the list of plugins available here. And that's great. I don't know 100% if it's the same set or if there's a different set here, but that's how you can find out. Neat. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, another question is, can security be enabled on the component? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. My yeah. my gut feeling is no. Yeah. But it, it might be yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's worth investigating. It's worth so investigating. We'll take we a look at about that. it. Yeah. It's a really good question. Yep. Okay. Um... Oh, that reminds me. Um, I did want to show you guys this as well. Uh, Alpha Shell is a template that we have in the product. If you go and you create a new, where I'll select web components here, and if I click new, I'll select web component, and then UX. In this list of templates here, there's uh, a couple of Elf, uh, PhoneGap Shell templates, and PhoneGap Shell V3 is alpha shell it's what we created so you could actually open this up here and and so see how it's made and publish your own version if you want yeah cool yeah yeah there's neat. the there's that list plugins 
A couple questions here about the security stuff I talked about a few weeks ago. I just want to let people know I haven't forgotten about it. I am building a GitHub repository where I'm going to put those files and the video. I just needed to strip out the serial numbers, and I got kind of slammed over the last couple of weeks with a few projects, but they are going up really soon. So I know there's a lot of interest in getting the uh, security stuff squared away. And when that goes out, I'm actually going to send an email to the people who registered uh, to, to everyone, so you, so you won't have to, won't even have to ask. Um, let's see what else we've got. That's kind of it, it looks like. For those questions, I have one other question that we'd like to get to, uh, which you may know, and it has to do with including uh, files in your project. If they want to include a JavaScript SDK, or maybe even a Node.js SDK in a project, do you know how you would go about doing that? Well, first you would need to add the the files to your project, uh -huh. um, and that's just copying them into the directory. So if you're on the web projects control panel here, mm -hmm. with your project open, if you click this uh, button here, it'll open up the, the explorer, button. and you could easily copy your files into here in like a, a JavaScript folder or something like that. If it's JavaScript, uh, if it's Node, we do have a separate more uh, Node menu over here that will create Node folders, and all that all that makes is a Node folder. But that sort of maybe simplifies things for you if you don't know where to create that. And then once you've added it, you you would put all your your files in here if it's Node. Nice. Was there more of like, do they need to know more? Like if you want to include it in your in your component and reference it, then you would come down here to like JavaScript link files for external JavaScript and add it there. If you wanted to link it into a UX, yep. Yeah, exactly. so yeah. Component, I see what you mean, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, if, yeah, you, if you're you doing Node, sorry, if you go back over that uh, topic again about including uh, UX files. Uh, files oh, sorry UX, about that. That's really um, key. Yeah, there's this section in the UX properties called JavaScript, and one of the properties there is JavaScript linked files. And this is where you can say, like, hey, my component uses these files and add them in here. Um, these links at the bottom will, will let you do things like select a file from your project. Um, it does need to be in your project, otherwise, it won't get published up with your application. But there's some there's some extra special directives here that you can do, like say like uh, load this before the functions section of my component is loaded, or do this in the head section, or do this late after everything else has happened. Cool. All right, uh, different question. This one has to do uh, with the application server running in an RDP session, and the question is. Is there a setting in the application server that tells it to stay running when the developer logs off of the Windows RDP session? So that's not a setting in the server. That's setting up the server to run as a service on your server. So that, right. that happens in Windows, and we do have an article on how to do that. Um, I believe there, that question was sent to us already. One is to run it as a – exactly. We have, yeah. I, did, I think we have a help article on that. The other thing people use is a piece of software called Always Up, and uh, the people who use it absolutely rave about it. It keeps your server up and running. When you close down, it treats it as a service, uh, and it actually notifies you if something goes wrong uh, and it's not available, and I don't think it's terribly expensive. So I think it's uh, – let me see if I can find the link to that. You could use that, yeah. You could also switch over to the IIS server if that's an option for you. The IIS will keep in life for you, and it's a lot easier to to set things up that way. Exactly. Oops. Oops. I'm trying to find a ways up on Google, but that is the yeah. If you can run on the IIS server, of course you could get a cloud account. <laughs> but or but you could get a cloud account, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but specifically, yeah. If you're running RDP, the problem is when you close your RDP session. It closes your software along with it, mm -hmm. I, I believe, in in almost all cases. Um, so you do want to run it as a service, and that's where you want to run it as a service. Always. And that's easy to set up. We have documentation on that. That may be the one thing that still lives in, is in like a PDF format, but I can that definitely send that out. 
Yep. It's whoever needs it, and we can look at making that easier to find as well. I'm going to include a link here in the chat window. Actually, I don't know if this is the right one, though. Sorry. Yeah, you know what? Send us an email separately, too, if you, if you want uh, an answer for that. It's a, uh, it's, we, we do have a few answers that can help you out there. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Oh, uh, many mobile apps now have an option to log in and remember me. So that login is not required every time. Is this a persistent login template what I need to use to create this functionality? I think actually that's right. I think it's correct. Yeah, we have that. Go over here to the web projects control panel, select web components, click new, new web component, select UX. Mm -hmm. And in here, we have. There it is. On the third from the bottom. This guy right here, yep. persistent login. Uh, this is a template that you can use to log a user in and then retain a token that expires after a period of time to re log them in whenever they open your app. And I believe this is the. Like we use, say, with Transform, for example. So you don't have to log into Transform every day, but after a couple of days, the token expires. I, I think that's how we do it, yeah. yeah. We're pretty similar. Cool. Yeah, and that's all done with JavaScript web tokens. Hold on, I click on everything. Try to find my way around here. But yeah, you can... Use this as a starting point or open this up and pull out all the code that you need for your own app. Mm -hmm. Back to something we just brought up a moment ago about keeping uh, sessions alive. Someone pointed out, and I seem to recall this also, that if you disconnect your RDP session as opposed to signing out, it, it, it may very well stay alive and that might be all, that might be all you need to do. That's so a good that point, yeah, fun. yeah. Another question about this uh, persistent login, Does could it work for desktop? Uh, I mean, could it work for web apps as well as mobile apps? Yeah, they're they're the same thing. Okay, yeah. Basically, like at, at, the, at the core of it, a web a mobile app is installed on the, the phone and can run locally and natively and has access to all the plugins, but web applications have um, access to some of the same features. The gotcha mm -hmm. with web applications is the amount of data you can store offline is extremely lim limited. Yeah, right. Very good. I think we're coming to the end of questions. So it might be a short day today, but we'll give everyone a minute or two to add something in. I don't know, Sarah, if there's something else you'd like to go over. Um, We can go look at the GitHub repository I made. Let's do that. Yeah. So I, I posted the link in there, but what you're going to find in here is that demo I created. The A5W page I created, a README that literally just has this content right now. But in here, you also find the PowerPoint, which I've already uh, saved off as a, a PDF and PowerPoint format for you. And if you go up the tree to my account, you'll also find uh, the Alpha Launch demo from last week. So that's in there as well. And I found some QR codes so you guys can install um, from the app. App Store and uh, Google Play. Awesome. Yeah. I think you pasted that in. Oh, you pasted. Yep, you did paste in a link to your GitHub. Yeah, I didn't. Over. I didn't send out the Alpha launch demo last week. Huh. Um, but I can put that in there for you guys too. Oh, that'd be great. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, Sarah, thanks very much for presenting. Thanks everyone for attending. If you do have more questions, of course, send them to guides to UIDES at alphasoftware.com. Hope you have a terrific week and stay well. Thank you and bye-bye.